Howdy meow. Welcome to Pet Talks TV. This is your family's talk show about pets. Nothing ready for us to talk about when it comes to your pets. So come join our community of pet lovers. Subscribe to our channel and allow us to entertain you and hopefully even inspire you. Today we have as our guest a very wonderful lady who has had many interests. She started off with a different career and discovered her passion for dogs, among other things. So we will have a quick chat with her this morning, and I'm sure you're going to be inspired with her story. So my name is uh, Tita Mi, shortcut for Tita Meow, because I love cats, but that doesn't mean we talk about cats only. We obviously talk about other animals and issues as well. We're live on Facebook and YouTube on the first and third Saturday of the month. So if you're watching this in a replay, just move the video forward. Now, if you missed it, our topic for today is about don't just walk the dog, dance. And this is going to be explained when we talk to our beautiful, wonderful guest, none other than Joyce Miller. Joyce Miller is a writer. She has adopted six racing greyhounds over the past 20 years and danced with several of them. She lives in the Church Hill section of Richmond in Virginia with her husband and her latest retired racing greyhound. Before she started writing, she worked for over 30 years as a mechanical designer at a nuclear physics laboratory. When she's not writing, she can be found dog training, drinking wine, painting, um, practicing yoga, traveling with her French physicist friends. Okay, that's a tongue twister. And she also tap dances. Or maybe you will find her volunteering with her Greyhound adoption group. But she said she doesn't do that necessarily in the same order that I read it. She is the writer and author of Look, You're Dancing. Friends, I'm so happy to introduce to you none other than Joyce Smith. Hello. Hi, Joyce. Good <laughs> Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We're on opposite sides of Earth, right? Of the world. Are, right, right. I'm from the Philippines interviewing you live from um, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, and it's nighttime there, right? Mm -hmm. How are you today, Joyce? Uh, did you have a busy day? I had, I had a great day. Um, you know, I walk my greyhound several yes. times a day, and um, I'm riding my next book so i'm i work on that every day and um and also we go out to dinner usually so yes yes actually if you notice that i got some pictures from your social media mm -hmm. page and uh, let me just pull that up again so there uh yeah like you have pictures doing all sorts of things like you're with your dogs and then there's a there's a painting on the bottom right. Did mm -hmm. you do that, Joyce? I didn't do that one. Um, yes, but I a, yes. a friend of mine did that one of me. And um, wow! And she is also the same artist who did the cover painting of my book, the Look Your You're book. Dancing book. Right. Yeah. And then I think these are the picture in the middle with the t-shirts are they your grandchildren those are my grandchildren yes and yes. we and we tie-dyed those t-shirts when we were on vacation yes yeah it must be i i see uh, a lot of you your pictures with your grandchildren yes. uh, on your social media pages so you must have so much fun with them but Joyce, before I start asking you some questions, let me show the audience uh, some of your pictures. Yeah, like uh, this one, I saw this on your website. Am I mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. is, a, is uh, Tell me about this picture and the dog that's with you. Okay, so that's my current greyhound. His name is Coheed, and that came from his race name, Coheed in Cambria, which is a rock and roll band, a heavy metal band. Yeah. 
I didn't wow. know that. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time, uh -huh. but I know uh -huh. it now. And I just kept the coheed part. Most of the racing greyhounds have interesting names, and then we mm. give them some shorter call name. But um, we wanted to take this picture in the local vineyard. So um, yes. that's where we took it for, you know, I love wine. So um, <laughs> the right place for my book picture for the back cover of my book. Wow, it's perfect, right? So and then we have this is your website. Yes. Tell me yes. about the picture, Joyce. So this this is one of my paintings. I painted this just to for my banner for my website. And this that's Coheed and me um, sitting on a blanket um, at a park uh, that overlooks mm. the city of Richmond. So um, we moved to Richmond when I retired in 2019. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, we like to go to different parks in the area and check them out and nice views of the city and the city <clears throat> sits on the James River, which is also uh, a nice wow. place to go take a beautiful walk. place. Yes. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, with the with the painting you made, it must be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, uh, of course, this is your book, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which we will talk about later. Oh. And I can see a glass of wine right there. Yes. <laughs> inside your book. All and right. You, and it's available. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and I was going to say, you can <clears throat> see the picture on the front is very similar to that other picture you um, that's the same artist that did right, that right. thing on the front. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice interpretation of you. <laughs> yeah. So your book's available on Amazon and mm -hmm. also on Barnes & Noble and mm -hmm. bookshop.org. I'm mm -hmm. going to put the description uh, below so that the people that watch this might uh, be able to more easily find your books online. And then this is this is Coheed. Is yes. this Coheed? That's yes. Coheed wow. reading my book. He's reading. <laughs> <laughs> as he, he must be as intelligent as you. <laughs> and oops, just give me a second for that. And this one, this is another book you wrote. Yeah, that's the first book I wrote. Um, mm -hmm. That that one I wrote um, as soon as, as right as soon as I retired. Um, I. I wanted to start writing and <clears throat> this one is um, historical fiction, but it's based on the true story of my grand uncle who played baseball in the 1910s and the 1920s. Wow. And wow. he played against Babe Ruth and oh. Lou Gehrig in the world wow. series. Yeah. So yes, he, yes. he, uh, he had a very interesting life story. And so I wanted mm -hmm. to, get that Take down yeah wow he played alongside with babe ruth the yes. historical is really yes. yeah wow did he have a lot of uh fans girlfriends oh, <laughs> he had many he had many fans he was um yeah he was at the time he was very well known he's um since then of course not very many people know about him but um mm -hmm. he played for the pittsburgh pirates and the washington senators um, he also had to go off and fight in World War One, and oh. he had some. Um, he got into an accident, had some health problems, but managed to mm -hmm. come back and play baseball again. So, so wow. it's an interesting. That's an interesting story yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Another story of survival, right? Yes, and perseverance. Yes. Awesome. Yes, and then of course these are some pictures of you. There are three of them here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and those pictures are about what? Oh, tell they're, the audience. Yeah, they're from the when I started. Um, so the the black dog is was my very first greyhound, and mm -hmm. um, her name was A Bar <clears throat> Kit. That was her racing name, so I just called her Kit, and um, mm -hmm. that's the one that I started to do dog dancing with, and right. um, I trained her to. You have to train them to do some behaviors like jump over your legs and circle mm. around you things like mm -hmm. that and then you put it to music and then it looks like they're dancing and then yeah. the th the third picture that was my um little heart heart dog um yes sammy davis jr and um oh. <laughs> and i got him when he was a puppy 
and um, I trained him to to uh, do some dog dancing. He was very smart, knew knew quite a few things to do, but he barked all the time. Mm -hmm. This really mm -hmm. high pitched, annoying bark. Mm, high pitched. <laughs> Do they normally have low voices, the greyhounds? Yes. And normally all low right. voices and normally they don't bark at all. They don't bark, really? Yeah, they stand so elegant, right? Yeah, they just They're like small in. horses. And, yeah. And look pretty. Really elegant. Yeah, right, right. Okay, now let's go into the story about how you discovered that you love... Um, dogs but like i went to your website and i saw there that there's an article a short article about your childhood mm -hmm. and can you can you would you like to share like, you know sure. like um joyce if i'm asking you any question and you don't want to talk about <laughs> it just say next next question <laughs> please <laughs> uh, okay so yeah sure. can you share yeah share with us anyway what's on your website about uh the childhood you had and how you how you evolve from from what you were feeling and thinking about yourself to mm -hmm. you know being i imagine like it it's 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 something big to be a mechanical designer <laughs> at the nuclear physics laboratory <laughs> it's the first time i'm reading something <laughs> like that for a lady so, even no so yes yeah share your story with us joyce so, so um well you know i was um so I grew up in the six, late 60s and through the 70s, which um, girls di didn't do a lot of those kinds of things, right? Um, mm -hmm. So um, my, I had three brothers, and um, my mom owned a bar. And yes. so, she, um, so she was gone a lot. And so, oh. so I was left... Because I was the only girl, and it was mm -hmm. that time period, um, we, um, I had to do a lot of the housework and mm. grocery shopping, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so, so I always found, you know, s solace in animals. I always found, oh. um, you know, I had uh, cats and dogs when I was younger. And, and mm. they just seem to make, make tough times better. So, you mm. know, mm -hmm. made it more um, easy for me to get through Lighter, those times. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Um, and so I was always very advanced in school. I, um, mm -hmm. I actually skipped a grade. I skipped um, seventh grade. I went straight from sixth grade to eighth grade. Um, mm -hmm. But I always loved art and I loved mm -hmm painting and I love drawing and um and my parents didn't think I should go to college <laughs> they thought that was a waste of time they thought yeah. that you should just come and work in the bar and mm. um my dad said um you know what you should do is learn a trade and he said mm. you're you're really good at math but and you like to draw so you should um, go to like a little technical school and become a draftsman. Mm. And so that's what I did. And mm -hmm. um, I went, I went for architectural drafting and the first place I worked, I, uh, I um, traced drawings that got ruined in a flood. And oh, all right. this was before we had computers mm -mm. and, um, and it was this um, company that made vacuum processing equipment. They made um, freeze dryers for coffee and they made um, pharmaceutical dryers. So anyway, I learned a little bit about vacuum systems when I was working there. And then mm -hmm. I went to work for uh, another company that was a German company and they um, made vacuum systems. And mm -hmm. then um, my husband at the time, my first husband, was uh, mm -hmm. did landscaping. And we lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And mm -hmm. he didn't work in the winter because, you know, everything was yeah, yeah. frozen. <laughs> Covered. <laughs> and so, frozen. We, 
So we decided <laughs> to move to Virginia because we had come here once on vacation. And, mm. um, and so we moved here and for a couple of years, I worked for a, one of the ship design um, companies and did ship design. And then um, one day I saw this ad in the paper and they needed yes. a, um, a designer for this nuclear physics laboratory and they needed yes. someone who had vacuum experience and oh. piping experience. And it was just like that was meant to be. Meant for you. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I went there. They couldn't to... have been more specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I went, went there to work and um, worked there for 31 years. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And that's where I met my second husband. And, yes. um, and that's where uh, I started uh, really working with the Greyhounds and also um, the the campus of our laboratory was about 600 acres and there were, huge. yeah, huge, <laughs> a number, several buildings and people were spread out all over the place. So, mm -hmm. um, so the, the management said um, they started a employees activities group and they said that the people, um, so say if you like to golf, you could yes. you could get with other people who like to golf like they made mm -hmm. these groups so i told them you know i was interested in training dogs and so wow. um so i started a dog training group and um we trained dogs for uh the last 10 years that i was mm. at the lab and so every year mm. we trained um a group to become therapy dogs mm, okay. and they and they went in the hospitals and libraries and kids read to them and right. um and also uh the therapy dogs were also a good place to have our dog dancing group because mm -hmm. the people at the hospitals and nursing homes would love for the dogs yeah. to come and yes, do their yes. little dog dancing things wow so you know joyce as i see it as i listen to you it was good for you because like you had a job Oh, I, I want to ask you first, did you enjoy your job per se? Because what I gather from you is you had a lot of activities that gave you uh, that satisfaction, that, you know, like being with the animals. It gave you a lot of um, opportunities Opportunity. to do what, what was so close to your heart. But yes. did you actually like your job of being a mechanical designer in that oh. nuclear uh, laboratory? Did I, you actually I, like that? I liked parts of it. <laughs> I liked yes. parts of it. it. It was very yes. challenging. It was very challenging work. And, um, mm. and I also liked meeting people from all over the world. Um, mm -hmm. That was the fascinating part um, because the mm -hmm. physicists would come there to do their experiments. And it was mm. one of the only places in the world where they could do their experiments. So, you know, we met people like i said i have some really wonderful french friends that i've had right. years and years and years and we travel mm -hmm. together and um you know we go to france and they take us to um off the beaten path places in france and they come here and we wow. take them to the grand canyon or you know yes. thing, things like that so yes. that part of it i loved um, right, and I right. and the work was challenging, and so that's that's interesting too, you know, to mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. challenging work. Yeah. So, um, but <clears throat> I did it. Did like you're saying, it afforded me the opportunity to right do things. Um, like uh, I had two two children, and I was able to, um, you know, be with them if I needed to. And, mm -hmm. um, and then the, all the things I did with the dogs and, you know, so it, it was, right. a good, it was a good place to, to, to work. Mm -hmm. So you had uh, a love for animals, even when you were uh, young, right? Yes. Cause you yes. said uh, when you would do all the house chores, mm -hmm. it made things easier for you. Yes. Um, you had cats. What do you prefer? Cats <laughs> or dogs? <laughs> um, 
for the longest time it was cats and then but my husband is allergic to cats so then oh. i couldn't have any so um mm -mm. so now i kind of think greyhounds are like cats in dog suits are they yeah, very much because so. they don't bark they don't, they don't bark. bark and they're in there they sleep a lot and um they're very cat-like in their movements <clears throat> and uh yeah, Things like very that. graceful, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, yes. with their long legs. <laughs> they're like horses. You know, when I see them, they're like horses. <laughs> they're, yeah, very nice. Yeah, so, all right. So, um, now I want to ask you about uh, how did, you said you trained them. Did you, did you study training, dog training? How did you learn to train dogs? So, I started with a, um, a kind of a mutt a mutt dog that I got from the local shelter and yeah. I had never trained a dog before ever. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to train, I'm going to train her just in basic obedience. Right. Um, mm -hmm. this was years and years ago, way before the greyhounds. Um, mm -hmm. and so I joined, well, I went and took classes at this, at a dog training club. Oh, all right. All right. And I met, um, this woman um, who was like the dog whisperer, like she could wow. make a dog do anything. <laughs> and uh, <Wow>. so, so <laughs> for we, real, for real. <laughs> and yes. I, so right. we, so I trained, her name was Marilyn. Um, yes. She, um, so we, tr I trained this dog, you know, to sit and down and, and come when she was called and those kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. But at that time, the AKC, which is the American Kennel Club, um, mm -hmm. didn't didn't allow dogs that were mixed breeds to compete mm -hmm. in their in their act activities. So yes. so you know, like agility and um, rally obedience, all the different fun things you know to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't allow. They do now. But at that time, mm, years that time they didn't. years ago, they did. Yeah. So I had this, yeah. you know, mutt dog and I, and I wanted to do more things with her. And so mm -hmm. that's when Marilyn said, well, you know, we, we could watch these videos and we can do this, this sport called canine freestyle, which is dog dancing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so said, um, we can train the dogs to you know, do a few, few behaviors and then, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll, and we'll try it. And so that's what we did. So, um, because of, of her, Marilyn, um, and then I started to read a lot about dog training and mm -hmm. I went to a couple conferences and, um, I just kind of went into it, you know, full speed ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> mm -mm, mm -mm. so it was really out of your own interest to yeah. learn yeah, yeah yeah and you 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 had you had your friend to start you off in, yeah. in, in, and and uh, everything became easy for you because and of you your know, yes go ahead and you know i i i really found it fascinating that mm -hmm. you know i also i so i like to write and i also i like languages and I found it fascinating that this other species, like we could communicate um, mm -mm. And, and, and teaching them words and how they understood words. And, um, you know, like it just was like mind boggling to me that mm. this, this creature who isn't, who doesn't speak English and doesn't, yes. you know, and, and yet I'm able to tell her to sit or lie down mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. circle around me. And just so I just found that part of it fascinating, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's um, something to think about. How come the animals can understand us and uh, but we do not understand oh. other humans? <laughs> yeah, other humans or other creatures or <laughs> yes yes it's so funny that you know like um yeah they always say that dogs are really loyal you know like 
and uh, it, it, it's it's you know as I, as I get to talk to a lot of people about pets because I'm not really like a pet pet fanatic myself mm -hmm. but I, I used to have a cat uh, a cat uh, who disappeared during the pandemic mm. uh, they say like when the cats feel like they're going to go they distance themselves mm -hmm. you know some of them they don't come home anymore so he, he just disappeared and never came back so you know like um the cats would be very my cat would be very uh sensitive like but uh i would try very my my very best to understand mm -hmm. you, you know like like what you said about the 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 dogs communicate you you're able to tell the dogs um uh, what to do mm -hmm. i heard from one of my guests before that dogs bark to express themselves mm -hmm. sometimes like because i've always been you know joyce i've always been scared about barking dogs that's oh. why probably i like cats better mm -hmm. because the, maybe when i was a child i was you know scared mm -hmm. by by a neighbor's dog or something and then um, one of the trainers said that when when a dog sees you and it barks, it's it's like its way of saying hi, hello, <laughs> I want to be your friend. Uh -huh. like, so I have to you know to to assimilate that. I have to acquire yeah. that <laughs> way of yeah. thinking. It, but it can yeah. be it can be frightening, right? If it's a big dog or a loud dog. Um, yes. I mean, it is. It's a little bit scary. But um, my my little greyhound Sammy. Um, when we would walk, we would walk in the woods or wherever, and he would get a little bit ahead of me, and then he would turn and look back, and he would like go, you know, woof, 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 and like, and it, to me, it was like he was saying, like, did you see that over there, or oh, or are you going to catch up with me, or? <laughs> <laughs> and he used to do it, you know, quite often, and so I think he, um he tried to communicate with me as best as I could understand him. Yes. That's fun. That's fun. Sammy, right? Uh -huh. So, uh, Joyce, when did you discover that uh, you had the, the, cause I don't think everybody can just train dogs, right? You have to have that, that uh, natural flair. I it, think it I helps. Think it's a gift. It yeah. helps. Yeah. yeah. When um, did when did you discover that you're able to do that? So, hey, you know, I can train dogs. I can, you know, I can I can make this. Uh, I can make a living out of this, or you know, I can I can help people. I think that yeah. What, I do. How did you How did you discover that? So you know, just that years and years ago when I had that um, that one dog that that I just thought I should just train her to just. To, yes for some obedience you know but then yes. she picked up things and so she seemed to understand me and so then that propelled me to want to learn more and teach her more and mm -hmm. um so so that's how it started and then she unfortunately got sick and um mm. and passed away at only six years old so she was very oh, young yeah, yeah and so is then, it heartbreaking yeah very it's very heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Yeah, and right. so that's yeah. when i um i you know i started thinking well i'm i love this dog dancing stuff that we were doing mm -mm. and i'm gonna mm -hmm. get a kind of a big dog because i'm a i'm tall and a big woman and i thought you know uh, maybe i'll get a greyhound because they're mm -hmm. they're um big but they they are much more challenging to train than um my little mutt dog was <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, i think uh, i think some of it is because of their um their physique um yeah uh, it's hard for them to s sit all the time mm -mm, um mm -mm. they kind of like to stand up stand and, right. and lay down <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> so, so we always say they are they go zero or they go 45 miles an hour. They don't go in between. There's no in between. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's all or nothing for them, right? Yeah, yeah. So what was your favorite dance? Like, you know, like, uh, are there, like, in dog dancing, like, uh, like people, they have cha-cha, they have swing, they have, 
Oh do, yeah. Do, does dog dancing have names? Like, do they have steps? What, um, what? 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 What's the favorite? What were you good at? What? What were you? Or yeah, because you said you don't compete or you don't dance anymore. At mm-hmm. least uh, mm-hmm. for for a show, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, what was your best move? Can you tell me? So, what did you enjoy doing? What were you most clapped for, <laughs> lauded for? <laughs> so the um. So the dog dancing, you can co- compare it to pairs ice skating. Um, oh, all right. So, so you at each level, you have <laughs> different um, moves that you have to perform um, if you're going to compete. So mm-hmm. the, the music is a certain length long um, at different levels, and then you you have different. Um, they give you different tricks that you have to train the dogs to do at that level. And mm-hmm. so, um, and as you move up the, the tricks get harder, harder. and yeah. the music gets longer. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so you have to do it for a longer amount of time and it's much more challenging. So, mm-hmm. um, so, so we had a little, um, routine that we did and the other thing you do with the dogs is um you just put on music and then yes. you just let them walk around um yes. you walk them around the ring and um you kind of look at how their feet match the music and so mm, that's all right on so their own yes that's how you pick the song that you're going to use and it might okay. be something that you hate <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that you as the person hate <laughs> yeah but, yeah but it looks really good with the dog so yes so you use they it. move along yeah yes. so so it's 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 the music being um suited to the dog yes not the yes. dog following the music. yes yeah makes and, sense <laughs> yeah and then it makes uh, sense so so sammy and i had a little um routine to hit the road jack and hit the road jack what's yeah, that that's the name of the song and um oh, it's right. kind of a snappy <clears throat> swingy kind of a tune and mm-hmm. um and so we had a little routine to that that we would do at nursing homes and um and i did a competition with him once in um northern virginia that was mm-hmm. on the pet crazy show yes <laughs> Um, yes, that's the one that I think I have a clip of that. I'm going to try and show it. Let me see. Uh, yeah, that's, wait, let me see that is the one. Yeah, let me sh- let me try and share that, okay? I'm going to share it. I'll see that. Uh, share a screen window. Okay, where is that? I'm just making sure I got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chrome. <laughs> it's it's uh, the um yeah it, here. It was the yeah, intro here. to the show. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna share it. Yeah, the one I sent you, right? Uh huh. Okay, so here you go. I'm gonna. This is the one. Did uh-huh. I get it right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So let me let me play that uh, short clip. And so I'm a little nervous. And the nerves go right around the leash to the dog. And so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> and the nerves go right around the leash to the dog. And so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> and you can hear Sammy's annoying bark there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can hear. So, okay. yeah, we, we went to this competition. And the producer from for the show that was on the... 2020 show that was called pet crazy and yes. um he followed me <clears throat> around and took video yeah, of you're saying. And yeah. That kind of stuff. <laughs> and then that was the clip that they put in the show none of us <laughs> none of us dancing <laughs> none of him winning his little ribbon just yes. that with him barking going <laughs> rah, rah, rah. <laughs> and maybe he liked what you said like you know the the, the nervousness goes all the way to the dog through the leash <laughs> you probably said that sounds very intelligent 
<laughs> it's uh, a unique way to to put it. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you for uh, showing me, giving me that clip. It was fun. No? It, it's just so sad that during those days, there weren't uh, cell phone cameras, yeah. you know, not yeah. too many uh, coverage. So um, now uh, let's go to your book. Oh, uh, I have a few minutes left. Okay. <laughs> well, I I I uh, just asked you for a, a short period for interviewing. No, no, I'd like to ask about your book. What inspired you to write the book? Uh, the title is "Look Your Dancing," right? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, "Look Your Dancing." What What's the book about, and what inspired you to write that? So, um, some somehow I felt called to write this. Um, I, uh, I, I started, um, well, we, you know, I did dog dancing for several years and the, and as I told you, I didn't have a great childhood. I never got to take dance lessons when I was, a a, a little kid. And, um, mm -hmm. so when I started to do the dog dancing, um, I thought, you know what, maybe <clears throat> if I took some people dancing classes, I would be better People. at dog dancing and so yes. uh, a couple girlfriends of mine at the lab and I um, when I was 50 years old I um, we went and we started taking the tap dancing class mm -mm. and we had this wonderful teacher named Miss Tammy and Tammy. Um, we would just do like the most simplest simplest steps a couple just tap 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 mm -hmm. tap and and maybe tap tap slide and she would go look you're dancing wow how <laughs> encouraging <laughs> so encouraging yeah and so that was uh, i said that has to be the title of the book because um yes yes it was um, and she would say you know we would just do these little you know uh Jazz, jazz hands and um and just simple simplest little things and she'd say and, and you have choreography we have choreography wow. look you're dancing and so yes. um, so then i just loved adored doing the tap dancing and yes. um and i do think it helped me with the dogs mm -hmm. also and so um so the, i just thought you know when that I needed to um, write down that story. So it's, mm. it's a memoir and it's an interspersed in it <clears throat> is, is the things from my childhood um, mm. that, that, you know, I didn't, I didn't get to tap dance when I was a little kid because mm. I mm. had to be taking care of three brothers and, um, mm. and, and, and then just how the dogs, um, just get you through they just get you through mm -hmm. all the toughest times of your life wow. um, yeah. my my uh my mom passed away early when um, mm -hmm. she was only 40 47 and um, wow, she, that's young she was um she she drank a lot that was like mm. the the fox in the hen house you know when you have mm -hmm. a yeah. person who drinks a lot but owns a bar um yeah so yeah so uh so she you know when she passed away um you know it's just <clears throat> it's just like the dogs that you have or the animals it doesn't really necessarily have to be a dog but they get, yeah they just are so comforting at those times mm -hmm. yes yes yeah yeah and so that's why you wrote the book. You put them yes. all together, your experiences. Yeah. It's yeah. all about, yeah. you know, starting out with the, the first dog I told you about, the the, yes. the little the little mutt that I trained and then how and then how I got into Greyhound Rescue too. <laughs> and there are a lot of um, stories in the book about uh, once I got into Greyhound Rescue I did a lot of their home visits. And I would go to people's houses to make sure they were, you, you know, that they understood what they were getting into by getting a retired racer. Right. And, right. Um, and sometimes people tell you and show you the most craziest things when you 
go into their houses. And so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, so, yeah. So, anyway, I wanted to write all that down. And, um, and yeah. And then about each greyhound, I had six greyhounds. Six, in, right, in right. there. And they're similar, but they all have different personalities. Yes. And so. Yeah. Um, you had a lot of experience with dogs, you know, like, uh, Joyce, I am just so uh, odd uh, with your story, you know, how how you've been able to transcend uh, the, the, um, the sadness, the loneliness, mm -hmm. quote unquote, that you had when you were a child and look where you are now look you're dancing <laughs> look, look look you're writing <laughs> look you're whatever you know like uh, it's it's you're an inspiration to those that are listening those that think they you know they're stuck you know mm -hmm. in, in 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 whatever they're doing in some place that they don't want because if you didn't have that um that perspective or that personality to go outside your box, then mm -hmm. you would have been miserable. But yeah, you, all I, those thirty-one years, I so agree. That's very good. <laughs> that's very. That is very inspiring, and I hope that's what the people uh, pick from you, pick up from you today. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Joy. So um, our time is up. My time with you is up. I really enjoyed talking to you. Surely, I'm going to calling you again all okay. the way the other side of the world <laughs> maybe we can talk about your next book that okay. you're writing right now is that going to um have animals also is it going to be about um, animals it has somehow? animals but that's not the main the um, main thing point yeah. of it yeah but all i'm right, going to have so an, no i'm going to have <laughs> i'm going to have animals in all my books in all your books there yeah, because you really love animals so Joyce I'd like to thank you so much for today and um, I know it's nighttime there and you should be going to have your take your rest already uh -huh. I just want to really thank you so much for giving me this time and inspiring our audience well thank okay, you for, so thank you for i hope me. to hear from you again yes it's my privilege it's my honor and my pleasure so i'll be i'll be right back with you in a bit thank you joyce so there that was joyce miller can you imagine what kind of a life she had having to um take care of their house chores and uh, members of her family as she was growing up and she has been able to find comfort uh, with her pets her cats and her dogs that's really an inspiring story but what I like so much about what we talked about today is that she didn't seem to give up and with that I'd like to encourage you friends out there who feel like you're stuck as we were saying earlier who feel like, uh, is this all that I'm going to do in life? Is this is this uh, all that I can become? Is this all that I can go to? You know, like, let's be inspired with the story of Joyce, who really just tried to make the most of where she was, of what she had. She tried to enjoy what she had, the resources she had, the animals. And look, uh, she's, she's, she's accomplished a lot and she's just really enjoying herself. So, and um, like I always say, there's never, it's, it's never too late to start, friends. It's never too late to start because like we say and like we know, every day is a new day. God is there. God is there. Every time we wake up in the morning, realize and recognize that it's another God-given day. And it's up to us to be thankful and to be joyful and to have a great perspective and to expect that something good will happen. Because when we are positive in our outlook and when we are thankful, when we, you know, when we give the glory to God, our creator, our maker, surely the good things will follow. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us this morning. I hope you were inspired and I hope to see you again next, next Saturday. My name is Tita Me for Petitalks TV. See you soon.